Good evening, everyone. I'm Sayyad Amir, and on behalf of AG School of Data Science, I welcome all of you to this masterclass on deep learning. So before we start with the session, I would like to give a brief introduction about our today's speaker, Professor Nida Parker. She is working as professor and head of academics in AG School of Data Science. Ma'am got 12 year, years of experience and uh, she's expertise in uh, Python, machine learning, deep learning and natural language processing. Ma'am has completed his B, uh, her B and then masters. Uh, and uh, she is uh, currently associated with AG School. So there was a brief introduction about you, ma'am. Uh, now with this, I request you to start the session. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Amir. Uh, ID team, am I audible to all of you? Yes, ma'am, you're audible enough. All right, thank you for that deep introduction. Um, I will quickly share my screen. Let me know if the PPTs are visible to all of you. Are the PPTs visible? Yeah, it's visible. Okay, great. So good evening, everybody. Once again, welcome to this masterclass on deep learning. And what do you expect from today's session? Understanding of different applications of AI, machine learning, deep learning, the mechanism on which the deep the concept of deep learning works and a uh, few use cases, which I may show you. Uh, also along with that, some of the latest applications in the field of AI uh, using deep learning mechanisms. So uh, let's begin with today's session. So uh, firstly, I would like to introduce where did this computer was invented. So uh, back during the World War II, the first computer was generated to crack down the German communication and the person behind this, Alan Turing, uh, wrote a paper in the year 1950, and he proposed this question. I propose to consider the question, can machines think? Back then, probably it was not possible to answer this question, but today uh, we'll try and answering this question, can machines think? And uh, how AI has impacted us in various domains uh, beyond our imagination, um, not leaving a single domain, be it the healthcare, medical, finance, each and every domain is using AI, AI automation tools. So it has uh, deeply uh, impacted us. So let's understand what is the backbone behind the, this AI that is being used in each and every domain. So the backbone of this AI that is artificial intelligence is nothing but machine learning. Now, uh, back then he proposed the question, can machine learn? So, and now we are talking about machine learning. So let's understand what is machine learning. So to give a gist of introduction of what machine learning is, we can say that it, it's basically deriving an insight from some data uh, or rather getting the pattern. Why would you need that? Now understand that if you are a firm working on a sales or marketing team, you would want to understand where in which month your sales have been good uh, in which coming months your sale would be good or should be good. But according to that, you can prepare the production. So you can use this machine learning algorithm. There are various machine learning algorithms that can be used. You can use this machine learning algorithm to understand the pattern in the data that you already have. We call it as a historical data. And based on the data that we have, we feed it to the model, machine learning model. It identifies the pattern and it will be able to tell you whether you know what the coming month sales would be or uh, based on the data that it has learned moving forward uh, introduction of deep learning and machine learning in our day to day life every time you search google when you are searching something on the google google is very quick to give you the results why is that so because it is being trained on complex machine learning algorithms uh, suppose you are looking for an image or anything so Google basically is already trained on these algorithms to search or to match the pattern on what you are searching and give you the top five results immediately. It doesn't take uh, long. You're, you're not the only user who is using Google. Uh, there are millions and billions of users who are using that, but it's quick enough to give you the results. Every time you're talking to Alexa, Siri, or Cortana, or any devices that take uh, voice as the input, a natural language processing uh, takes place behind. Uh, a speech to text recognition conversion happens. And then you, when you ask Alex, how was the temperature today? 
So it does give you the temperature today is uh, whatever degrees it is. It is not going to give you the song is so and so. So the relevant answer is being given to you. That's because a natural language processing algorithm works behind. So let's take a look at what the future looks like for an artificial intelligent world. So let me quickly show you this video. Is my screen visible to all of you? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, I guess the audio is not shared on second. Yeah, what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go? What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So how does it work? We used computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion, much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our Just Walk Out technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. Your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. So that was Amazon Go. So currently there are more than 29 stores in the US that are uh, that have been opened using this technology along with uh, other Amazon stores. Let's take another application or new application. So uh, this is AlphaGo. AlphaGo is a software created by Google's sister firm that is called as the DeepMind. And it's a software uh, which plays the game Go. Uh, which is the only software, artificial intelligence software created, uh, which has defeated Lee Sedol, who is the world champion and probably the strongest Go player in the history. So uh, uh, there was a match that took place between Lee Sedol and AlphaGo, uh, in which out of the five matches, uh, Lee Sedol was able to defeat the AlphaGo one time, but majorly all the four times, AlphaGo was able to uh, defeat Lee Sedol, who is a champion in the uh, Go game. Now, when we are talking, now uh, a newer version uh, of this AlphaGo have already come. That is AlphaGo Zero, and there's another one that is KetaGo. Uh, they are also being rolled out. So let's take a look at few of the applications of deep learning. Uh, virtual Assist that we've been using and Google Translate is one of the applications. Uh, GPT-3, that is a language model, uh, which is based on very uh, transformers and very uh, deep neural networks, GAN, and uh, I would like to also talk about DALI, which is the latest application um, in this field of deep learning. Let's understand each of these applications in detail. The first one, that is Google Translate. It takes as an uh, image or text as an input to convert from one language to the other language. Uh, wherein, uh, suppose there is a signboard which is in some other language and you, you are roaming around in some country. Uh, when you, you, you do not understand the signboard, you can just use this Google Translate and it will give you the translation in any language that you want in. Uh, similarly, now the input here was an image. Uh, similarly, you also have Google Translate. You can try this. You can just type Google Translate and you'll be able to find this. Where, where is it converts one language of text to another language of text 
suppose you have typed hello in english and it it will give you you want it to be how hello is called out in french it tells you bonjour so uh, let's understand the mechanism behind the working of this google translate so basically the user gives the input as in what do you want to translate there is a model that has been trained we'll take take a look at the model and how they work uh, the neural networks and everything how they work later on in today's session uh, google's data that is training input is already now as you all know machine learning is something that the machine learns or acquires information on the data which it has seen so there is a lot of training input that has been provided to the algorithm or uh, and to the model a model is built over that algorithm and based on the learning that the machine has done you give a input and based on that you are going to get the output so here it could be either an image as input and you can get the image as output or you can give the text as input and you can get the text as output there next one is generative pre trained transformer 3 that is gpt3 uh, it is one of the largest built language models uh the capabilities are great i mean it can write stories for you it can write scripts for you it can write poems articles and even code that looks scary that you know it is able to generate code for you so yes these are uh, the applications of your gpt3 so let's understand an example how it works suppose you have a input the sky is full of and the output uh, that it gives you the sky is full of clouds now this since it is a language model it works on the textual data uh, there is a huge corpus of uh, uh, data or textual data on which these models are trained upon so here the important word is sky uh, because there is a word sky over here it's giving the output as clouds had there not been the word sky it would not uh, it's the output would change based on whatever word you have over here Uh, another example so suppose you have a movie and you want to convert the movie titles into an emoji that is also been uh, done by gpt3 uh, i would like to show you this example uh, by using the api that the gpt3 provide so just give me a moment So this is the playground that we have. It's a playground by OpenAI. You can directly uh, try by yourself. You can just type OpenAI playground, and it will take you to GPT-3. Here, I can write the name of a movie. Suppose I'm writing Transformers. So let's see what it gives you. This is the input. That is the text input that you are giving, and the output because I have uh, chosen. There are a lot of examples, applications that you can choose. uh i have chosen in the playground wherein i want to convert the movie title into an emoji so here i have selected this and when i submit this it is giving me the output at, for transformer something so let me try another one like uh jaws it's a movie related to shark so now every time uh the model predicted okay probably i had used this uh, before so i will have to re log in into the playground i i'll show you this again after some time uh, after i re log in so there are a lot of examples that you can choose from i've chosen the examples from movie emoji to emoji let me try and open it again so these are few of the examples that it is giving by default when i open the playground uh the batman is converted with a man and a bat star wars it tried for the star wars what it is giving you so it's giving it is converting it to the word that the movie has you know star and world so let me try one last one let me try spider man so probably it will give something to the spider if not spider and man so this is the um open playground that is uh, available by open ai that you all can try and this this is the applic uh, this is something that where you can try the gpt3 so moving forward let me quickly shift back to the ppt so uh, these are all the movies uh, which i tried previously kung fu kung fu panda if you see it's giving you a panda and you know kung fu uh, dress it is giving you family man jaws so based every time you're feeding in some movie it is learning and based on that it will provide you an or uh, the output relevant to the movie name uh, surprisingly for me it gave an at road 
finding nemo it actually gave a fish that looked like nemo and because the word finding was there uh, it it basically gave the magnifying glass so this is your generative pre trained transformer that is gpt3 let's understand uh, so now there are a lot of language models that are used uh, gpt3 is one of the language model it started with rnn then came uh, your uh, bert then came your transformers then came the gpt uh, 3 and uh, why is gpt 3 so powerful and how it is able to do so much so many tasks at a time that's because you can say that it is it has 175 billion parameters so it uses the concept of uh, neural network in which you know there are a lot of parameters that are being generated so imagine the number of parameters in gpt 3 are 175 billion when the previous version that is uh, BERT has 0 0.34 billion parameters. So that actually makes GPT-3 the largest neural network that is ever created by humanity till date. Uh, but they are not go going to stop it over here. This is a graph that shows the parameters in billion, uh, GPT-2, then uh, Turing, NLG, natural language, grammar, then there's GPT-3. So compared to all the other models that have been built, GPT-3 has the highest number of parameters. And the amount of data it has been trained is tremendously large. That is, it has got around 45 terabytes of text data. So just give you a glance of uh, how much this data is. Am I, uh, can, can anybody tell me how much of data does Google store? Anyone? Anybody would like to answer this? How much of data does Google store? You can unmute yourself and tell me. Okay. So let's see. It is 10 to 15 exabyte of data. How much is one exabyte? One exabyte is nothing but 1 million terabyte of data. That is uh, equal to your 931 million of gigabyte. Okay. Now we are using our personal computers that has data that is uh, in uh, GB, that is gigabyte. So imagine we have a personal computer that, that stores 500 GB data. How many of these personal computers would you require to match up that data? It is 30 million personal computers. That is the amount of data on which uh, this model is being trained upon. So, you know, tremendously uh, improvising models. They are coming up with many new models. Uh, as I told you, this is one of the models that is currently I talk, spoke about that is GPT-3, but uh, they, are, they are planning to build up, you know, many models and the amount of parameters that you see over here. This is currently that is there, that is 175 billion parameters. The models they are coming up with is empty energy that would be 530 billion parameters and Palm Coder Minerva 540 billion parameters. So these are the upcoming, they, they are not yet launched in the market. They are coming up yet till now only gpt3 has been launched so that was about the language model gpt3 let's talk about uh, the gan or generative adversarial network that is gan we talk about so basically gan works on the principles of discriminator and a generator uh, in the gan model let me just simplify and explain there is a discriminator and there is a generator so the work of the generator is to generate an image and the discriminator, the purpose of discriminator is to classify whether that image is fake or real image. Now, both these are working on deep neural networks and both of them are computing with each other. Computing with each other. Now, GAN images, these images that you see over here are not real images. They are not images of real human beings. They are images that are generated using this GAN mechanism. How does it uh, do that? You know, using this discriminator and generator, what it does is uh, the, Im the images that are generated by the discriminator uh, generator are given to the discriminator. It tries and develops such images that the discriminator is not able to identify whether it is a fake or a real image, and it will classify that image as a real image. The moment it classifies it as a real image, that image is generated. So this is the uh, concept behind the working of GAN. Let's try and look at some of the applications of GAN. So applications of GAN are using tonification apps. There are a lot of apps that you use. Uh, there are a lot of filters that are provided to you. Snapchat filters, a lot of filters on Instagram. 
so they use this tunification app wherein you upload the image and you get the tunified image of that image that you have uploaded deep fake or uh, deep fake is uh, another application where gan is used to understand what exactly is deep fake i would like to show you a video of uh, deep fake So I hope my screen, okay, so here goes the video. Joined today by Tom Cruise. <laughs> Honored and privileged to be here. Uh, next to him is, <laughs> good to see you, so uh, the, as always, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, quite uh, you and long. McGregor, to my left. So you see it's there are a lot of uh, famous uh, stars sitting out there. To send you DVDs. Uh, you can watch this video later. So these are all the images that you see, or you know, the entire video is created using a deep fake wherein you see personalities like Tom Cruise and other Hollywood movie stars. They're sitting around the table, the Iron Man star. So all these and this this entire video is being created using the deep fake mechanism and deep uh, using deep fake and deep fake is created using the GAN mechanism. So that is uh, this is an, another application uh, where it can be used. Uh, yes, it can be dangerous sometimes because um, using this technology, a video can be created of uh, people who or you know, some content that they have not shared. Let me quickly go back to the PPTs. So this was about the application of GAN, that is tunification and uh, deep fake. There is a website with the name uh, thispersondoesnotexist.com. You can go and even try that website. Every time you refresh the page, you will get a new image. And that image is uh, for the person who is not existing in this world. And that has been created using the GAN technology. So uh, let me talk about DALI2. Uh, DALI2 is the latest application of, of the OpenAI lab uh, in which it, it holds the capability to convert a textual data into an image. So you give the input as a text and it creates a picture for you. you that is what DALI2 is capable of doing it. So let me quickly show there's a play playground available for OpenAI. Uh, and in which you just have to give the text as the input and it will show you the image as the output. So let me share the screen with you. So here, the, this is the lab open AI for DALI. You can see over here DALI. So here I am just typing a word a sentence and whatever sentence I type over here, it is going to convert that to an image. So I'm typing over here a horse reading a newspaper. So let's, there's an option to generate an image. So it will take few seconds to generate the image and it is going to show you how it will uh, generate different images of horse reading a newspaper. So here you can see whatever you type over here, it is going to generate the image to whatever. If I type, you know, a horse drinking coffee instead of reading a newspaper. So it is going to generate that as well. Drinking tea, let's call it tea. So here also they are giving some examples uh, wherein an armchair in the shape of an avocado. Anything that you type over here, if you see, uh, it is showing images wherein, you know, a horse is here. You can see the image that you see, it, it looks something similar to a teacup. So whatever you type over here, it is going to draw it for you. That is DALI. And right now, uh, DALI 2 has also come in, which, which has the capability to generate an image from a text. Earlier, using deep learning mechanisms, you could extract the textual information from the image. That is also possible using deep learning. Suppose you give this image to a deep learning model and it is going to say a horse drinking something. That is what the output would be. Now, DALI 2 has the capability to reverse it, you know, wherein you type a text and it gives the image as the output. 
So let me go back to the slide. So that was about DALI 2. Uh, ever imagined how Facebook uses data science? So we've talked, spoken about uh, AI, we've spoken about, uh, you know, the use cases, the application, the latest applications of deep learning. Uh, I would also show you a few of the other applications of deep learning, you know, over the X-ray images, uh, the program which I have implemented. But let's understand what is data science and how Facebook uses data science. So Facebook uses uh, an algorithm called as uh, deep text. There's a lot of textual data going on Facebook every minute, every second. It analyzes the data to get the insight out, out of the data, what kind of data is coming, what kind of data is not coming. Uh, it creates a beautiful memory videos for you. How does it do that? It uses the face recognition algorithm to identify the people in the pictures that you have and tag it to them and then create a memory. It, it always throws you the memory. You have memory with this friend or uh, sometimes it creates a video for you uh, by tagging those people. So it, it uses a face tagging algorithm, face recognition algorithm wherein it recognizes, the, not only uh, recognizes that there are people in the picture, but who those of your friends are by matching the names, it gives you, uh, you have memory with this friend. Targeted advertising is used, is used too much on Facebook. Uh, so you can practice an exercise. You can go and search something on Google and you must have the Facebook account logged in into that system. Anything that you search on Facebook, suppose you're uh, wanting to go for a trip to some place and you're searching it on Google. Next time you go to Facebook, you will find the ads relevant to what you had searched on the uh, Google. So you can definitely try uh, these activities. That is how Facebook now Meta uh, uses data science and it uses a lot of way to analyze a lot of things that you have. Some of the other applications of ML. Now, these were the few of the applications I've spoken was ML and DL. So ML is machine learning, DL is deep learning. Understand what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning. A machine learning algorithm works mostly on the numerical data. When it comes to the images or, you know, image to text or something of that sort, we use the deep learning algorithm. ML algorithm, there are a lot of um, ML algorithms. I would not like to talk about them. But some of the applications I would like to talk about ML, that is Google search engine, which I've already spoken. Anything you search on Google, a complex algorithm runs behind to give you the results in a less amount of time. Digital assist that you've been using with your phone or uh, at your home. Recommendation is something that has been used. Any e-commerce website you log in, you select the product. So there are, there is a, complete there's machine learning deep learning and there's a recommender system which works completely uh, different wherein based on the products that you are selecting it is going to rec recommend you few other products so that is the uh, so machine learning is used for products recommendation also netflix recommendation or you know or your amazon prime if you watch certain movies if you have uh, some categories of movies it, it definitely recommends you by saying that you may also like these movies so that it uses the principle of machine learning to uh, identify what movies you like and based on that, it is going to recommend you. A uh, robot vacuum which uses IoT and machine learning to identify and sensors to identify the object and based on that, it cleans the room. Self-driving cars uses computer vision and machine learning. Uh, also, there are a lot of applications of machine learning in healthcare. Uh, today, everybody wears smart watches. So the data in your smart watches is being analyzed. And if, you're, if you must have seen every week or every monthly, you get a summary of the steps that you have taken or the workout that you must have done. So all the data that, that you're feeding or that is being fed through the sensors in the smart watches is being collected and it gives you the analysis of the data and it gives you the complete report on uh, the kind of or uh, data. It, nowadays, smartwatches are also coming to check your oxygen levels and many other things. So that is definitely, um, healthcare is definitely using a lot of ML. Uh, some of the applications of deep learning, lung inflammation, suppose you have an X-ray image and you want to find out whether there is uh, inflammation in that X-ray. So what you do is you take up these images, you feed to the model, 
uh, you tell the model okay these are the images of uh, lung inflammation uh, lung inflammated patients these are the images of non lung inflammated patients you feed it to the model and then you feed a new uh, image to the model uh, by uh, when it gives you the output whether that image has got less now uh, during the covid pandemic you seen you know the ct scans and other things uh, used to take a lot of time you know the test covid test that we used to do so definitely if used properly because the accuracy is something that has to be very good when you are using these applications in healthcare so you know with respect uh, with the help of the domain expert and if it used properly definitely it will be a boon in the healthcare sector lung cancer detection so lung cancer detection is a, a difficult thing to detect uh, generally so ai can be used artificial intelligence could be used to detect the lung uh, Sig sigma there is organization sigma it uh, it uses lot of uh, images to train upon and to understand whether that images have lung cancer or not uh, google brain is a sub uh, of the google sub the part of google which actually works on images wherein you give a very small image and it can be it it can extract a lot of data from that image uh, wherein it you know if the image is even blurred still it will use the mechanisms to uh, give you a better picture and extract uh, the insight from that particular image uh, deep mimic is used in um, animation a lot of this is used in anim animation image outpainting is a tool that is being used suppose Uh, you give the input as half of the image to the tool, so it draws the complete. It completes the picture for you. So the input goes as the image over here, and uh, based on that, the input that you have given, it is going to draw or complete the picture. So I've been talking about machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence. Let's understand the graph. Where where does deep learning stand? Where what is machine learning? so in short if i have to give one liners about each of these things artificial intelligence is nothing but ability of a machine to mimic a human behavior that is nothing but artificial intelligence machine learning is basically a machine is learning uh, on the basis of the data that you are providing to the machine okay it learns the patterns and it by learning it is used to predict few things in the future deep learning is a part of machine learning uh that uses complex algorithms and deep neural nets to train a model uh, one of the difference is uh, in the machine learning algorithm you give the features to the model you by yourself you extract the features and you give the features in the deep learning model it ex extracts the features on its own so when you give an image or uh, you just tell that image is of a car how why it is a car you know it has a certain style of wheel it has a certain color it has a certain shape so that all features are being extracted by the deep learning model itself to understand is better uh, deep learning versus the traditional ma machine learning where does machine learning fail machine learning fails when there is huge amount of data we have already seen the models or the language models the amount of data that they have been trained on there is tremendous amount of data you know today the data is huge and every organization is using a uh, lot of data their previous data to learn the patterns from the data so wherein wherein the data is so huge the older machine learning algorithm fail to perform or does not give very good performance that is where your deep learning algorithms come into picture so let's uh, see one more application can a ai assist world visually impaired Uh, can a AI as a visually impaired person to run? Uh, I've got a video of this as in how computer vision and AI and machine learning algorithms can be used to assist a person who cannot see or whose vision is not that great to run. You know, let's quickly see this. What we came up with was a system that just uses a regular Android phone. The machine learning algorithm that we have detects the line and can tell whether the line is to the runner's left, right, or center. We can then send signals to the runner that guides them left and right based on their positioning. The first time we went out, we didn't even know if sound would be enough to guide me. So it's a 
sort of that beta testing process that you go through. From human eyes, it's very obvious. It's very obvious to recognize the line. Teaching a machine learning model to do that is not that easy. You step left and right as you're running, so there's like a shake to the line, left and right. As soon as you start going outdoors, now the light is a lot more variable. Tree shadows, falling leaves, and also the line on the ground can be very narrow, and there may be only a few pixels for the computer vision model to recognize. We didn't want to rely on any internet connection. We had to take our huge model and shrink them into something that we can run on device as fast as we need for someone to run at full speed with. from participating in this. It was no furry dog. It was just being with yourself. Absolute freedom. So that was uh, the visually impaired person able to run uh, using the computer vision and a machine learning algorithm. Let me quickly go back to the slide. So yes, definitely it can uh, be a boon to humanity wherein it can resolve so many things. Uh, imagine the feeling that person must have had to be independently running uh, without any person's help and using the AI technology or AI assist. So let's understand what is artificial. You know, uh, the deep learning mechanism is based on artificial neural network. And the artificial neural network is based on the a neural network that is in our brain. Our brain has millions of neurons, okay? That, so this is how a structure of neuron looks like. And uh, this is how a single neuron in an ANN looks like, wherein you can have inputs and some mathematical function, and then you have the output. So this was a single neuron in a artificial neural network. If you have multiple neurons, suppose there are a lot of, this is the input layer, this is the hidden layer, and this is the output layer. So you have lots of inputs over here, there are a lot of hidden layers that you have, and then you have the output layer. Based on the input that you have and the type of problem that you're solving, it is going to give you the output. Let's understand how a deep learning model classifies uh, whether it is a car, a bicycle, or a bus. So when you look at this image, or when a human eye looks at this image, you know it is a car. Because over the years, your brain has been trained to identify this as a car, this is a bicycle. Now let's go a bit more in depth. Uh, how do you identify it as a car? Because you look at the tires, you look at the headlights, you look at the shape of the vehicle. Similarly, when it comes to bicycle, you look at the pedal or the handle or the shape of the tires. Both of them are having different shape of the tires. Based on that, you can classify, okay, this image is of the car and this image is of a bicycle. Let's understand how a deep learning model does it. So when you're feeding the model, you give the model lots of uh, inputs, wherein you label this input as a truck, as a car, as a bus, as a bike, and as a bicycle. So you're giving labeled data with features. The features it is going to extract, how a car looks like, how a bicycle looks like. You're just telling that this is a car, this is a bicycle, this is a bus, and this is a motorcycle. That's what you give it to the uh, model and the model will be trained based on these features. Now the model will be trained. Uh, now when you give a new data to the model, based on the learning that it has done from the previous images that you have given, it will be able to classify whether that image is a car or a bus or a bike or a bus or a bicycle. Let me show you. So uh, if you're giving a single image as to a deep learning model, this is how it looks like. These, now image cannot be processed by this. So the features, your this image, if it is a black and white image, it will be uh, the representation in the form of pixels from zero to 255. If it is a colored image, it would be uh, three matrices of a red, blue, green, you know, RGB image, wherein you, every matrix will have the value from zero to 255. So this is the input that is being given to your deep learning model. And based on that, 
it is going to classify whether it's a truck bus car or a motorcycle so the output there are uh, there are certain activation functions that we use over here based on that it tells the probability that which of these uh, has the higher probability so here it tells that uh, the probability of this image being a bicycle is more so here it, the output would be something like 0.9 and for the all the others it would be 0.1 0.2 the total probability is always one over here when you are talking about uh, deep learning algorithms i would like to talk about two algorithms that is the cnn and the rnn cnn is a convolution neural network it is used for image classification the example that we just saw wherein you give the image the lot of layers that we saw over your hidden layers and then at the end there is a matrix flatten matrix that it takes and based on that the functions that we use since it is a classification problem multi class classification problem we use the softmax as the activation function over here so uh, next is whenever you are processing on the textual data we use that is rnn that is nothing but your recurrent neural network so now this is a recurrent neural network wherein the output again goes back as the feedback to the this because the sentences because you are working on textual data it needs to remember what uh, text came before that uh, text or you know after that type text so that is why you, we use that is a recurrent neural network that is rnn uh, deep learning for mri and it can be also used in pe uh, pet images and other images uh, wherein you know the doctors can use it to understand what it is used uh the example that i am talking about which i spoke about i'll be showing you the implementation of this as well uh wherein you give the input as a chest um, chest x ray uh this is chest x ray where there is no pneumonia uh this is a chest uh, chest x ray where there is a pneumonia present in it you feed it to the model and if you see over here the output it gives that you know it gives the probability that is 0. Point something so it is a negative class that that, that 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 means there is no pneumonia in it similarly when you give an input of x ray image where there is pneumonia it will give you a higher probability that is close to 1 so you can classify it it is a positive class and that's why it has the pneumonia let me quickly show you this example which i have implemented of pneumonia so here uh, if you can see these are the images as i told you that there needs to be training and testing images so these are the training images that i had given to the model or uh, wherein there are a lot of images uh, for lung inflammated you have to classify it and give it to the model so these are all the images where the lung is inflammated and these are the class where the images where lungs are not inflammated okay so these images were fed to the model as the training data set that you see over here and then the model was tested on the test data set so there are some images in the test data set so any model building that you do will have training and testing wherein because only training the model will not be of that use you need to test what the model you have to build so again there are two categories given uh, then you compare the results because you already know the results of the test data set you compare the results that the model has given predicted and these actual results that you have based on that you will understand how well the model is performing and after that is done i have taken over your three images that the model has not seen at all during the training or the testing so these are the completely new images to the model which were then fed then the model was able to identify whether uh, this image is lung inflammated or not so let me show you the code for that i'll not run the code again because uh, uh, because the deep learning uh, models uh, take a lot of time we use Go i've used google collab over here using the gpu so the algorithm that i have used is cnn this is a cnn based model wherein you are having the initial uh, layers and then there are a lot of uh, hidden layers into that and the model is being trained so look at the parameters you know we have been talking about gpt3 about 175 billion parameters even this uh, model that you have built is having across 5 lakh parameters or more than that so this the entire model was being trained on the data and the final output the three images on which i had shown you so this was the output that i got uh, for the first image the model is predicting that it is a inflammated your it identified that there are two classes 0 and 1 0 means it is a lung inflammated and uh, for the second image also it is showing that it is lung inflammated and for the third 
image, it is showing that it is a normal X-ray image. Uh, there is no inflammation of the lung in, into that particular image. Let me go back to the slide. So this is how it classifies. If you see, it gave the output as class, uh, whether this was the zero class and this was the one class. So if the image is having pneumonia, it will give the one class. Otherwise, it will give the zero class. So uh, Amy is a research at Stanford. It is it is that they had uh, conducted a research wherein uh, the radiologist versus AI. So there were around four to five hundred X-ray images that were given to the radiologist to identify whether those images had pneumonia or not. So the radiologist took around four to five hours to uh, finish the task and give the results. Uh, can you all guess how much time the AI model took to? Uh, identify whether for those four to five hundred images, uh, how how much time did it take? Anyone? Anyone? Any guesses? Well, uh, it just took a single minute for the AI to identify whether it had uh, pneumonia or not. How AI will transform health professionals? Uh, definitely, it can be used by radiologists, pathologists, dermatologists, and lot other things. And based on the images that you provide to the tool based on the training that you do based on the deep learning mechanisms that you use uh, it will definitely be uh, able to transform the health professionals uh, there's this uh, playground that you can use it actually gives you the picture the the one which i showed you uh, the input layer the hidden layers uh, so i'll quickly show you that You can try this uh, deep learning playground for yourself. So this is the playground that you have. So I've been talking about, this is the input layer, this is the hidden layer, and this is the output layer. Uh, you can, the data set is not visible to you, but you, but you can choose the, uh, the kind of data. So here, this is a simple classification problem, wherein there is one class is in yellow, and orange and the other classes in blue. Uh, you can use uh, more hidden layers to look at the output. And the data set that you're using, it is able to classify. Here it is giving you the test loss, training loss. So this is a playground wherein you can check the deep learning models. There are a lot of other things uh, wherein you know, you're using just two features over here. You can use more features like x squared, squaring, multiplication of these two features. Based on that, it will definitely show you some different, different outputs. So uh, that was all from uh, my end. Uh, at the end, I would like to show you, you can see the slide. Uh, what is data science? So we've spoken about deep learning, machine learning. So what is data science? So data science is an interdisciplinary field which uses the domain expertise, mathematics, computer science, uh, wherein you know you use machine learning statistical data because all the machine learning models are based on your statistics. So uh, statistical knowledge is very important because you need to identify or understand the trends in the data uh, and you know data processing because any data that you are going to work on real time data is never clean. So a lot of time is being devoted for you know pre-processing the data because the data needs to be in a specific format when you give it to the machine learning or a deep learning model. So this is about the data science. Uh, I would like to end with the quote of Andrew N. Uh, just as electricity transformed almost everything 100 years ago, today uh, you can you can I can hardly think uh, of an AI industry that uh, you know any domain basically any domain that you can't think of will be working towards AI. So you know. Uh, a question arises, is AI replacing human jobs? I would say no, but definitely you need to upgrade yourself or upskill yourself because each and every domain industry is using artificial intelligence and a data science to get better results and improvise results on any data or any problem statement that you're working on. So uh, that's all from my end. I would like, uh, I'm open to take questions if anybody has any questions. Participants, do you have any questions? Okay, so I guess there are no questions. So 
thank you thank you once again for uh, everybody who has been here who has been attending uh, on other forums uh, for attending this uh, master class on deep learning i hope uh, you've understood and you know got some insight about data science about the uh, artificial intelligence about deep learning machine learning uh, that is the buzzword everywhere today i hope uh, you are going away with some insight about data science and the machine learning and the deep learning algorithm so thank you participants for joining me for today's session thank you everybody thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you everybody